That's our title here today. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16, we're going to take it at the sixth uh, seal, vial rather. <clears throat> you want to remember that Satan, the false messiah, appears at the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial. So we're going to pull back the curtain just a little bit today and see what you have to look forward to, to recognize his coming. So here we go, Revelation chapter 16, let's pick it up with verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east may be prepared. Verse 13, for I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs. Didn't say they were frogs now. Quite the opposite said they weren't, but they were like that maybe. Came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Those are simply three roles of Satan. <clears throat> 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth, not the kings of the east, but the kings of the earth, and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of Armageddon. Now, you see, that wouldn't mean so much unless you really understood what the word east means here. And I'm going to take it to you in the Hebrew because we're going to end up there. And I'm doing it because it makes it easier for you to check out of what I'm about to share with you because all you have to do is open your Smith's Bible Dictionary under the word East and you'll find out that there are two words, Kedem and Mizrach. Kedem is K-E-D-E-M and Mizrach is M-I-Z-R-A-C-K. Mizrach means the Far East. It means China. It means the Orient. But what's important that you know what Kedem means? It only gives you a spot geographically to go to, and then you go to that spot, and it's what is in front of you when you face East. So what is this Kings of East we're talking about here then? Well, where did he tell us to go? He said, go to the great abounding river, Euphrates. Euphrates is a river that is 1,780 miles long. So it covers a great deal of ground. And you have to look at everything east of there. Well, what does that consist of? Well, let's, let's start with Turkey, parts of Turkey parts of Syria, parts of Iraq, all of Iran, Afghanistan, and uh, Pakistan. These are the kings of the East. And as you learned this spring, they're already swarming. So the way for those kings is being prepared, which is doing nothing but preparing the way for the false one. Well, uh, you don't understand, brother, they're democracies. Oh, they're democracies? Well, um, you would, I've, won, I've got a bridge over in Brooklyn. But it's a really a very simple thing. And I said, I'm using this because it's real easy for you to check me out if you own a Smith's Bible Dictionary. And all you have to do is look up the word East and it doesn't mean China. It means the Arab nations that join the east side of the Euphrates River. Naturally, they are about 99% Muslim. Now, is that coming down on the Muslim people? No, I'm, I'm quoting scripture. Anytime you go take man's word, well, it may not be politically correct. I don't give two hoots, whether it's politically correct or not. That's what it says. 
that's what it means, and that's exactly where you had better be watching. What prompted? What vial did I say we just poured out? The sixth. Well, who comes in the sixth? Well, as you know, in the ninth chapter, in the fifth trump, we found out all these people come wearing like it were crowns, only they're turbans. So pretty soon God gets our attention, and you begin to wake up and realize, hey, it's happening. We have to observe. We have to understand. Verse 14, and there are, and for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth. We got 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now, I want you to remember one thing about this verse that I saw three unclean spirits. It's important you hang on to those three for a moment, okay, in your mind. Now, go with me, if you would, to Revelation chapter 9. This is where we read the fifth seal, and we're going to pick up the sixth um, uh, trump, rather. Let's see what it says about the sixth trump. This would be the appearance of a Babdon, that's the destroyer. He's coming, dear friends. You've been in preparation for it for a long time. Verse 13 of Revelation chapter 9, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Now this is from God, so you can count on it. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Here we have that river Euphrates again. Now, let me ask you a question. You want to always analyze. What angels do you know of that are bound? I mean, in chains. Well, let me think. The good angels aren't bound in chains. Of course not. But the fallen angels are bound in chains for destruction, as the great book of Jude declares. So we know where those four are from. Four is the number of earth as well. But here God begins to loosen and to use the very part of those fallen angels, which do you know who they come with? You know, we could read the 12th chapter where we know that Satan and his angels are cast out at the same time. If four of them are loosed, we're getting close. That's all I'm, my point, okay? And I'm going to drop it there. But I want you again to note Euphrates. It's important. And the four angels were loosed, which had prepared, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to stay, to slay, the third part of men, what? to lie to them, cause them to be spiritually deader than a hammer. Probably a little message like, oh, gee whiz, we've come to fly you away. You know, we're, we're just little angels. And you know how you could trust angels. Just be good and get in our wagon and let's go. So you see, you're, we're about to come up against some things that you could be played the fool real easily, but you're not, and you're not going to, because God has forewarned you. These are not good angels. They are part of those that are health for destruction. It makes it very clear. And they are going to have power to, to spiritually cause one-third of the people to die. Not a physical death, a spiritual death. The number of the army of horsemen was 200,000, and I heard the number of them. That's a swarm. I mean, a really swarm coming across that Euphrates that is on the other side of that Euphrates. I don't know, maybe some of you have been watching television lately. It swarms 
across the Euphrates. Maybe you've been paying attention. Verse 17, to our moment, month, year means God has one set moment that this is going to happen. You do not want to be caught asleep. Okay. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, one, Jason, two, brimstone, three, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire, one, smoke, two, brim, and brimstone, three. You say always pick up a set of three in this. Three evil spirits. Verse 18, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Well, what came out of their mouth? I'll give you one guess. Lies. False teaching. Misleading people. And how they love to hear it. They swallow it hook, line, and sinker. If anything, say, give us more. They love the supernatural. They're going to get it. Unfortunately, it's the negative. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, and in, for their tails were like unto serpents, one of Satan's names, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. They'll, they'll bring about, to, you know which is worse, to murder a flesh body or to murder a soul? You know, a flesh body, you live eternally then spiritually. But when somebody takes your soul away from you, you lose your eternity. It's a serious, serious thing. And that's what people are playing with. And God has chosen an election that must stand the gap, that must know the truth, and must make that stand. 20, and the rest of the men which were not killed by the plagues yet repented not of the works. They don't care of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone of, and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. We have a living God. Why would somebody worship a piece of rock? If, if someone told you to, would you? If they could make the rock jump, would you? If they could perform miracles in the sight of man, would you? A lot of people will. You won't, because you only worship the living God. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorcerers, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. They stole a birthright, or they're trying to. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Now, the reason I told you we were going to take this from the Hebrew in Dedim, which is to say, Dedim was always when you wanted to point out the compass to somebody, you used demon, Dedim. That means face east, and, and then always north was this way, south that way, and west that way. That's the way you could point out the compass. But Dedim is always to the east. That becomes very, very important in deciphering this prophecy. You know, I don't think if anyone, anyone is halfway awake, you look what's happening in this world today, east of the Euphrates, you can see what's going on there. It's not pretty. Not pretty at all. I don't know that... God trains people to let little kids blow themselves up in minefields to, so you don't waste a good trooper there. But that's the way it goes. God can use whomever he chooses. But unfortunately, history always repeats itself. That's why God, that's one way God teaches us. Now, Old Testament, Zechariah chapter 10, please. Zechariah chapter 10. Verse 
Verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. What was the condition there? You have to ask. For the idols have spoken vanity and diviner, diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams. They confront and they comfort in vain. It's a false comfort. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. That would teach truth. There just wasn't. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I was punished, and I punished the goats, for the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them his, as his goodly horse in battle. Out of him came forth the corner out of him, the nail out of him, the battle bow out of him, every opposer together. It's all in Christ. He is that chief cornerstone. He is the foundation of the temple on which we build. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets and in the battle, and they shall fight because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. Skip on to verse 10. I will bring them also out of the land of Egypt, and gather them out of Assyria. Now you just moved past the Euphrates. Okay. And I will bring them into the land of Gilead, and Lebanon, and place them, and, and place shall not be found over them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction and shall smite the waves of the sea and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. That's the Euphrates. This is one mistake. Some people think this is the Nile. Not so. Assyria has no article there. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15, makes this just as clear or a lot clearer. If it is, I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. With him, you're not going to lose. With him, you have the victory. And so it is. Continuing on in chapter 11. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty are spoiled. Howl, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage has come down. Cedars of Lebanon have always been um, stood for our people. And he said, they're coming down. If you're, if you're not in God's house, you're in a heap of trouble, my friend. That's what this chapter is about, is you're going to be on your own if you pull away from God. Not a good place to be. A voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions from the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. In other words, feed my children that are locked up and people are trying to sell them and take advantage of them. They're, they do that all the time. And taxation, um, uh, particular orders that are given to small businesses and other things, they're controlled. Got them right locked up there and they're selling them. You're going to find out what he's saying here is it's not a new thing. They sold him too. Verse 5, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, blessed are the Lord, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. 
they're so dumb, they don't know what's happening, their own shepherds. We can use them however we want to. Unfortunately, that's true. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land. If you're so stupid, you'll let that happen to you. Without turning to me, so be it. So you see, that's, that's when there comes a time our father gets fed up. saith the Lord, but lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king, lowercase, and they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. Now, a lot of people would get real nervous there. I'm going to deliver them into the hand of their king. Now, you're one of God's elect. Who is your king? You're going to be delivered into his hand. Is that frightening? No, it's very comforting. If they want to die, let them die. If they want to be deceived, let them be deceived. But your king will take care of you. Your king will stand by you. But be intelligent enough to be able to read between the lines what our Father is telling you here. If they are so stupid that they'll listen to the sheep traffickers and let them work on them that way, hey, so be it. I'll let them destroy each other. Verse 7, and I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you. In other words, um, that, I know my children that they've got, they're selling for slaughter. Oh, poor of the flock. Now here you have an arrow. Okay, this is two words, one word turned into two. The word in the Hebrew manuscripts is Canaanite or Kenite. But it's better translate sheep traffickers that sell our own people. And I took unto me two staves, the one I call beauty and the other I call bands. And I fed the flock. And this uh, beauty is beauty, and bands is union. It holds them together. Three shepherds. Underline that. That's that number three again. Remember I told you to make a note of it in Revelation? Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. They hated God. So there you have it. It's the showdown. It's the time. We're creeping up on it. You want to be very careful. You want to be awake. God will always keep us informed. Verse 9, Then said I, I will not feed you that that dieth. Let it die. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. In other words, if they want to destroy themselves, let them destroy each other. That, that's a great time of teaching. Is that tough love? You bet it is. But again, I want to back up to that other verse. Who's your king? It certainly isn't that fake one. It certainly isn't one of those three false shepherds that he's going to do away with. Or at least I hope it isn't. I hope you couldn't be deceived into that. But you see, we're coming to that time. You're going to see your own family, some of them, be drawn into this. God is not going to help them if he has given them the word, if they have heard the teaching, if they see the leadership of Almighty God, and they still want to go with that, hey, so be it. Have a good trip. You can't blame our Father for that. There's always the millennium. This is a time of teaching. Our Father knows when to get rough, okay? It's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, Chesty and Patton would always say, you know? It's, son, don't ever volunteer to fight for your nation to give your life to your country. You destroy that other, I forget what he called them. It wasn't nice, though. <laughs> you kill them. Well, this comes down to this point. You stay with our king. 
and you're in good hands. But you start playing around in the world, we're coming into some very, very dangerous times. If they want to blow each other up, hey, let them blow. It's going to happen. Well, are you being a little rough right now? No, I'm preparing. It's going to happen. It is written. So uh, am I saying that's going to happen to you? Not at all. For your king will take care of you. You don't have to worry about it. Verse 10, And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. I, I wanted to let them get a little, little rough stuff. And it was broken in that day, and so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. They, they knew that God's word was true. And... Um, this, these, the poor of the flock is um, the sheep traffickers, okay? They know God's working, and they see it. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. You see what Christ is telling you here? This is your king. He's telling you about the sheep traffickers. They sold him. They bought him for 30 pieces of silver. Do you think they won't do the same thing to you? That's what, that's what Christ is saying here. They did it to me. They'll do it to others. Are you going to let it happen? Answer, no. We're not for sale. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it into the potter a goodly price that I was praised out of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. And, of course, blood money can't stay in the house. And then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands. And I break my covenant with the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. They become two separate houses. 15, and the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. It can happen, my friend, get ready. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land. You want to know why we're in the sixth? That's when he shows up. This is him. Which shall not visit those that be cut off. Not going to help them. Now there shall seek the young one nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. They sold me for 30 pieces of silver. I heal, I make well, I take care of people. People won't listen to me. If they want to follow him, let them go. Let them have a field day. You cannot blame him. Anybody that can read knows that shepherd is coming. It's not a good sign. Verse 17, to complete. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His right arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. In other words, I'm going to finish him off. He's not going anywhere. If you follow Satan, you're following a dead man walking. But oh, how, how seemingly right he can be when he talks to people. The most beautiful of the cherubims. How he loves. How he loves to deceive people. How he loves to be with people. You know... <clears throat> God is really good to you. He gave you an example of this years and years ago of how it was going down so you could better understand it. And we're going to go there. Judges chapter 7. Verse 12, let's pick it up there. Uh, let, let, me, let me first bring you into focus here. 
The Midianites had just really overrun Israel big time. But, but they had somebody helping that's almost obscure in the background that a lot of people are not familiar with. That's what you need to pay attention to. And that's what Gideon had to contend with. Twelve of chapter 7. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were a curse. Neither, did, neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. And so it was. I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm in Joshua and I need judges. That won't get it. Miscompopulated there. You, you want to be real careful who you follow. You can be misled. <laughs> be real careful. Okay, now we're going to go with verse 12, Judges chapter 7. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east, you underline that. I mean, the Midianites were not bad people. But who do they have with them here? The children of the east. Do you know what this word is in the Hebrew tongue? Kedem. It's where you look to, it's always, well, let's, let's go on. It'll, it'll identify them. These children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers uh, for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand of, by the seaside in multitude. Uh -huh. Let me see, we got a little bit of a clue there with camels. Who do, Ahab has camels, used ones. You know, let's see. But then here's the word grasshoppers. What, what is this? What is this word grasshoppers? It's locust. It's the locust army. It, it is Arba. In the Hebrew tongue, do you know what the word Arabian is in the Hebrew tongue? Arbe. God makes things pretty clear when you listen. Thicker than locusts coming from the east, the children of the east. 13, and when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came into a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it and the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for unto his hand God delivered Midian and all the host. Well, who's all the host? Children of the east. Who? And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hands the host of Gideon. And he divided the 300 men into three companies. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise and behold. I understand you can't even number how many of these people are. They're like locusts. How many men is Gideon taking with him? 300? You know why they only had 300? Because they had to send all the wimps home. You don't go into war with a bunch of wimps. All men of war. And when I, when I blow with the trumpet, 18 and and all that, uh, that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also in every side of all the camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And you know what happened? They ran over each other and began killing each other. And when that 300 made such a stay of the children of the east, I told you this happened before. All you got to do is make a deeper study of the whole thing. It'll all fall in place. The reason it makes it easy to understand with God helping you is it's happening before your very eyes. 
that happens every day, and God is your king. Let me see, king of kings and lord of lords. To us there is no other. So let there be kings of the east. Let them wear turbans. We will worship almighty God and the son thereof. Because with his blessings, how many did it take? 300? Well, we've got a lot larger army than that. And there's no wimps in it. And I, I hope. <laughs> but anyway, we'll, we'll call if it is. Okay. Nobody ever has to do anything that you haven't got your whole heart into. Okay. Knowing your faith, for we walk by faith and not by sight that he is with us, that he takes care of us. So, beloved, we will pick this up next spring, if not before. The swarming is really buzzing. Like a real Arab, all over. So don't let one day go by that you don't take inventory. I'm speaking about national news. Pay attention and show yourself approved. Most of all, let God, I'm rolling some kind of a bearing up here on the thing. I guess it's off of somebody's pointer. Somebody B minus a pointer, that'd be bad, huh? Okay, the reason I know what it is is I've got one just like it, only I would never let mine screw off the end. I don't think. Beloved, do not be deceived in these end times. Study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of God is so simple for him to show us day by day as we lead. I love you all. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the